So when you really want to take YouTube seriously and take the plunge of actually being a full-time YouTuber, this is a live stream for you. And you might say, wait, Daryl, I'm already full-time. Well, how would you like to have a little bit more success? And there are some systems and ways for you to succeed on the platform, on YouTube. Uh, so regardless, if you're a part-timer or just getting started or even a full-timer, this live stream is for you. And we're going to actually share with you how to actually have a little bit more success on YouTube. And ultimately for those that want to take the plunge, that want to actually take the, uh, the momentum of your YouTube channel to the next level so you can quit your day job and do YouTube full-time, we're going to be discussing everything. Now, for those that don't know, I'm Daryl Eves. I have been on YouTube since 2005, and I'm obsessed with YouTube. I literally am obsessed with YouTube. And ultimately, I've helped generate over 90 billion video views on YouTube, uh, built so many different channels, worked with the biggest brands and YouTube uh, channels in on the, on the planet. But the ones that I actually am the most passionate about is channels that I've actually been able to help or mentor. And I'm really excited for today's live stream. You're gonna get a lot of value out of this. And I think a lot of you are gonna resonate with some issues uh, that, that Joe has actually faced. And ultimately, it's going to help inspire you to create better content and really look at your data. Now, I'm here to tell you, uh, one of the things that you uh, might not know about me, I'm obsessed with data because data helps us understand what we need to do next. And as we make data-driven decisions, um, sometimes the, the data-driven decisions are scary, but as we make these data-driven uh, data decisions, uh, we, we can really put a plan together and really look at the right type of things to really succeed on YouTube. Now, here's where I can tell you uh, that I'm the most excited about this, is there is no plan that perfectly just happens on YouTube. It's always about having a plan, executing on the plan, and then looking at that data, and then analyzing that data in a way to know what to do more of, what to do less of, and, and ultimately make a small tweak on your next plan. And ultimately, that's how you grow on YouTube. And this is where I'm really excited for you to meet Joe. Uh, and we can have a really, really in-depth discussion on the scariness of YouTube and taking the, the leap to go full time. So I just want to welcome uh, one of my students, Joe. Joe, how are you doing, man? What's up, man? I am super excited to have you on for multiple reasons because uh, for uh, everyone's context, I, I do occasionally, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations. And I just remember talking to you specifically about your journey. And I'm like, man, uh, you're, you're in the thick of it. Um, and I don't want to jump to that. We're going to get to that in a second. I think it's yeah. really, really important. But I, yeah. I really, really remember your pain when you came to me and, and was able to see the massive growth that you actually have right now. And I just, I love it. I love it. So why don't you take a minute, introduce yourself, uh, to kind of talk about your channel a little bit. And, and then we'll just kind of just dive right in uh, to the conversation of how it was to get started on YouTube and where you're at today. Sure. Um, my name is Joe Samuel. I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was a high school math teacher for 17 years. And uh, the YouTube channel is called Kids to Kids. And we started, we started off playing with mantra truck toys. And then after that, we kind of uh, pivoted into a larger niche of just like kids kids playing so that's kind of where i'm at Met. Yeah. yeah yeah and and this is what this is what i love is there's all these different type of niches here on youtube and i've seen i, I don't even know if i can count how many niches that there are on youtube but i've seen success over and over and over and over again and I want those that are watching this live stream right now not to check out if you're not doing kids stuff because we're going to actually talk about people. We're going to actually talk about people and and decision making, you know, as content creators. And ultimately, when you when you understand people, the viewer, and who you're making content for, and and you're looking at the data the right way, you're going to succeed regardless of the niche. There's not a niche I, I, we can't crush on YouTube, right. right? I've just I've just seen way too much. And for me, I'm really passionate about your niche. Uh, believe it or not, of the 34 gold play buttons that I have. 
Mm-hmm. Got quite a few in the kids space. So I'm like, <laughs> hey, here, here we go. So I'm, I'm ready to talk about it. So um, let, let's talk about your early fascination uh, just with video in general. I, I think that's kind of where we need to start because I think people come uh, onto YouTube at different places. But how did you get fascinated with just capturing video content? Yeah, sure. I think if you're going to talk about my, if I'm going to talk about my YouTube channel, I got to first start off with just uh, my, like a video camera in my hand from when I was a kid. Uh, my parents, they just had this philosophy when they were raising us to just like anything we showed interest in, they would just kind of like support it. So I can remember in the eighties, uh, that's when I grew up way back then. Um, we had this thing called a PXL video camera. So I don't know if there's anyone out there who remembers this, but it actually ran on audio cassette tapes. Hmm. So like it was really it was really funky, but it worked. And so my parents were like, oh, you guys are interested. So they got us. This was before video cameras, before cell phones, all that. So that's my first experience of just making videos. And the reason why I bring it up is because I just have a passion for making videos. I'd probably be like in my 80s with like a cane. I'm probably still going to have a video <laughs> one hand, a cane in the other. And I just enjoy doing this stuff. I found yeah. in high school, I made videos for projects instead of papers in colleges. And, so what happened was basically after I had my second kid, me and my wife, uh, we like kind of divided and conquered. So she was with the infant, you know, she needed to catch up on sleep sometimes or feed. And then I had this other kid who I was just trying to like get her, get him out of the room so she got a break. So what do I do when I have a kid, you know, outside, uh, outside the house is like, let's make videos. Cause that's just what I love to do. <laughs> that's kind of where the channel started. Just me hanging out with my son, making like really random videos. Yeah, no, that, that, that's really cool. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people can relate to that too. It's just like that early discovery of capturing footage and then replaying the footage. And, and, um, for me, I actually, uh, saved my paper route money up for a VCR. That, that was yeah. the first thing that I did. Um, I did go for the camera first. I went for the VCR because there were commercials in the eighties that just made me laugh every time. And I wanted to share it with my friends. And so I saved up for a VCR and, and bought one. And then I bought a tape and I recorded the Wendy's commercials there you and go. Uh, Bob <laughs> Baker, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts commercials. So I could actually uh, watch those videos with, with my friends. It was just like the craziest thing ever. So I was doing That's YouTube funny. before there was YouTube. I, you know? Know. I was like trying to that. share it. Remember, right? remember beta? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, 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 and for me, and for me, then it was this discovering like the, the production of it. And like, for me, I love to be behind the scenes. I love just the, uh, the element of the creation of the idea, the concept. Um, I think that there are others that are really, uh, into like the visual elements and stuff. And I'd say I I'm into that just Mm -hmm. because of the nature of my, uh, ideas, but, like, uh, I think capturing footage, I, I, I spent quite a bit of time doing that as well. I think, you know, yeah. that's kind of where the fascination came from, but, uh, for your case, so you had that growing up and, and then when you started having ch- children, you're like, okay, you know, my, my parents gave me access, you know, yeah. and, and let's go ahead and, and, yeah. um, kind of do my passion and, and yeah. share with my kids. And wh- what was the first video that you uploaded to YouTube? Like why, why did you upload it to YouTube in the first place? Um, I think I had a YouTube channel before when I was like in college or like after college. I don't even know. If, yeah. So it's was, it was like when I was young working, um, when I first started teaching, I just had a YouTube channel. Uh, like there's some random stuff out there because I was a math teacher. I had like a quadratic formula song. So I was trying to like. Dude, utilize that sounds video. like a very boring channel. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> go watch it. Go watch it. It's got like baby, a Michael Jackson in it. It's got like a baby. Okay, that, that's and, like, pretty funny. Really <laughs> my students. Um, so then. I had a YouTube channel. So then to me, it was just like natural. Uh, like some people play basketball with their sons. I was just like, I have a YouTube channel. Let's just make videos with my son. So yeah. I like made, uh, I think the very first video I ever made on YouTube with this channel was my son was like one years old. and He's walking around like holding a phone, just like gibbering to his, uh, to my wife, yeah. about all the animals at the zoo. But then, I mean, like, I kind of like got into like, that was just kind of like me put posting something, but eventually I started making videos with him, but they were uber random. Like I can remember, like I made a video of like my son jumping in puddles. I did like a, right. him on a carousel. Um, I did like a crayon unwrapping song. He liked to take the wrapper of crayons. That's what he did for like hours. He'd rip off all the wrappers. So I was like, let's make this a song. So I like made a song, but I realized after that is like, uh, 
just because a kid likes doing something doesn't necessarily make it a good video. He doesn't like to watch himself do it. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> he liked to do it, but he didn't like to watch it. So yeah, like a lot of trial and error, I think at the beginning where I was just trying to get this thing started. I was like, uh, I was just like grabbing all my friends. Anytime like my, I went to my friend's house, I'd grab their cell phone and I'd be like, here, let, let me see your phone. So I'd like, like it, subscribe to my channel. Right. I even remember one time having like five laptops open with phones and I was just like hitting refresh on everything to try and get like views. And then the one video that uh, popped off was when we one time made a monster truck uh, toys video from a channel. Cause like if you make YouTube videos, then we're going to be on YouTube. So we were just watching content and stuff. Right. And we were watching this one guy um, uh, make videos like with his son, like playing with monster truck toys. And I thought in my mind after I saw that, like, I'm not trying to be like proud or everything, but I was like, I could do better than this. Like, <laughs> I was, like, There's something missing here. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I could do something in this space um, that, that I think he's missing. So, so then let me let me uh, let me go ahead and, and unpack something. because I think this is really important. For, so you had a desire to create content. Number one, you started watching content so you can make better content. And you're like, wait, I can do better than this. Mm -hmm. And so you created content. And when when was the, the point where you go, OK, uh, I need to take this a little bit more seriously because, you know, things are happening here. Yeah. So when I did that first monster truck video, when I, I, I thought I could do better, like it started getting momentum. And then I started realizing, like, um, I don't have this many friends on planet Earth. So there are some people out there watching this, like a lot of people are watching this. And so I was like, OK, so let's do another monster truck video. But then what happened was I went back to like other stuff, too. So I would do like a monster truck video and it would do well. And then I would do like another video, a ra another random video. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would do a monster truck video and I do another random video or like sometimes it would be even like related like Lego or like a Hot Wheels. But right. it just seemed like every time I was doing monster truck stuff, it was like popping off. And then, um, then well, let's, let's stop. Let's stop right there, because I think this is a really important point. Um, I think a lot of people, when they start on YouTube, they try just a, a variety of different things. Yeah. Um, and they notice, oh, hey, this is actually performing better than this. And why is it this? Because it's like a better quality. Like, I don't know what's going on. Right. And I want to I want to uh, pose this one question. Knowing what you know now, there are people watching this live stream right now that are probably in the same situation that you were in the sense of just posting random stuff. Um, and even though that it might not seem random to them, you know, from the viewer, it's random. What would you do differently? I definitely would have just like submitted to like the data, like the data was telling me something. And I think I just, I don't know, I'm just kind of like a free spirit kind of person. So I was like, I don't want to like go that specific. Like I want to just do my weird sense of humor, right. having fun, you know, but eventually the data was telling me like, this is like, it's like almost like the law of supply and demand. Like yeah. this is the demand right here. Yeah, yeah. You gotta supply this if you wanna grow. Yeah. Now here's here's the thing is, this is one of the things that I, I kind of get some PTSD when people are like, the algorithm wants me to do this. No, <laughs> the algorithm doesn't want you to do it. People yeah. want you to do it. Yeah. Like there's a demand of the viewers. They're more engaged. They're liking this type of content. Yeah. The algorithm doesn't do anything. Like right. all, all it does is track the viewer and and then, you know, it's just that viewing patterns. And so yeah. at the at the end of the day, uh, yeah, we have to make some some good decisions uh based on data driven decisions. And so right. um ultimately you're kind of uh, you know, doing a variety of things because you're like, hey, I'm more interested in this or whatever. But every time you did a monster truck video, it'd pop off. Right. right? Yeah. And there's three there's three things kind of related to this. I'll just shoot them out real quick to answer the question. But the first thing is um, my appendix burst about <clears throat> four years ago. And when that happened, um, I kind of was spent a little bit of time in a hospital because there were some complications. And I realized at that point, like, uh, time is short and uh, I need to take this. There's something here. I don't know what it is, but there's something here. So I got to just go all in on this. Yeah. So I like took a loan from my parents. I bought some equipment and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to just see this thing through. Like, I'm going to take this seriously. And then two other things that happened after that was like, I made all these videos randomly with like monster truck and not monster truck. 
And then two videos I made kind of like solidified, like this is what I'm going to do, monster trucks. And uh, like uh, the first thing was I made a video that I think hit the first million views. And so my first monster truck video hit like a million views. I was just like, this is crazy. I can't believe right. it. You know what I mean? I'm like so excited. Even one of my students came up to me uh, and they were like, Samuel, like, have you seen what happened? I said, you got me like really excited. And the second thing is I had my biggest flop. And my biggest flop was I filmed the whole experience of my third child being born. So I brought oh, it to the U of M hospital. It's a touching video. Like you'll probably shed a tear if you watch right. it. But my audience of four-year-old boys was like, no, thank you. We don't want that. But I'm like most proud of it. Even to today, I'm most proud of that video. But my audience was like through through views just showed right. me, no, we're not interested in this. So after that big video and after this flop, I was like, I'm going in to monster truck videos. So let's let's kind of unpack a lot of this. So uh, you got a loan, got some equipment. Uh, you're still doing your your. I won't say nine to five because no no teacher. <laughs> it's a nine to five yeah. job. Yeah. You're always going. I got a couple of brothers that that uh, are educators, and so um, so you had full time employment. Yes. And and you're doing these little videos in between, and yeah. you got a video that is getting a million uh, views per video. You had some health complications. And, and now it's like, the question would be, um, you know, what's next? And so you're like, okay, I'm going all in on yeah. the data um, for the monster trucks. I'm going all in on that. Right. Um, and, and you started to produce and that's yeah. when you started to see momentum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and like, was it just more consistent? Um, like what, how did you make that first step? Because I yeah. think that that's the true step of you saw an opportunity that wasn't random you're like okay i'm going all in on this and right. like how consistent were you and and what was that process of you uh, putting out content yeah there are like little data things uh in youtube that you can look like when should i release uh like how much should i release so i started like looking into my youtube analytics and i found and i came to the conclusion like two times a week uh, i was going to release on monday and friday at seven in the morning and then i also realized the videos that were like popping off were around 15 minutes. So then I was like, okay, I'm gonna make 15 minute videos twice a week. And I did that for like two years. Mm. And, and everything under the sun related to monster truck toys, like I did. So I have yeah. like a list here of like tons of stuff, like in yeah, the we, we don't need to go through that list because <laughs> I saw that list. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long it's list. Like, <laughs> you have an idea, I could tell you I had that idea and I did it. Yeah. Then you're done there, got the t-shirt. So yeah. for a few years, I was just rattling off all these ideas of like monster trucks. And it's a really big space, even though it's like a specific toy, it's a really big space. Yep. Um, like there's like Marvel monster trucks, dinosaurs, uh, like construction trucks, like any boy toy you can think of has a monster truck theme related to it, yep. as well as like RCs and like dress up. And I mean, there's just so many things you could do. So for two years i was like i could play in this space because i'm with my kids too yeah, so yeah you know i mean well, you're playing with toys boys love toys yeah and i'm playing trucks. with my kids and yeah. I'm, you know so it's like i could do this i could play with my kids you know yeah so here's here's the thing uh because now we can segue into uh where i think is the most valuable because during that time you weren't even full-time i mean you're still trying to figure things out and you know go from there right and and then we met specifically um and i want to talk about that because you got um you got really demotivated i guess because you're like okay the only way i'm going to succeed on youtube is to make monster truck videos mm -hmm. and you're just like if i make another monster truck video <laughs> like here's my list daryl here's where it's at yeah um i i want to i want to kind of go through your process of what you're able to do i know that you were inspired by another creator yeah uh, that had a similar problem in a totally different niche like a For totally sure. different niche but it was like it spoke to you, but you want to go ahead and um, it's on because she's actually on the, the on the live stream. Oh, too, my so. gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> my my sister in law is actually a big fan, too. Oh, right, good. Um, so what happened was um, I was talking to my wife and she and I was like, you know, I think I want to take this to an, another level. But in order to do that, I got to take a sabbatical for my job. So she's like crazy, almost as crazy as me. So she's like, OK, you want to do this? This is what I need from you, Joe. So she's like, we need to have one year savings in the bank. So 
that if the day you take off a year, YouTube kicks you off, we can survive one year because the sabbatical means you can come back to my job after a year. So I was like, okay. So I saved up all this money and I took off. And as soon as I got to that point, I went from like coming in contact with over a hundred people a day at my job to zero, to yep. me in a library in a cubicle, like just me all by myself, you know, these five hour days. So the first thing I realized after that happened and I was working by myself on this, I was like, I need to find people like me because it's a lonely profession and YouTube can drive you crazy. At least yep. for me, it would drive me crazy because I yep. don't know why this was happening. What's going on here? How is it? And so like, I kind of noticed some patterns throughout the year, but I couldn't, I couldn't talk to anyone. I had maybe two creators in my space. So the first thing I did was like, I'm going to go try and find some more creators. So I looked online, I Googled YouTube conferences and then, <laughs> then one was like, like one where I think, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's like, you can meet the creators. And then the other conference was, or you can meet like, like yeah, it's a, fr like a fan, fan creator experience. Like we we fan won't say creator. VidCon, but yes, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> like you could be a fan. And then the other one was, you could be a creator. And go. Right. So I was like, okay, obviously I want to do that one. So I went to that and uh, yeah, then I just kind of like listened to a lot of people speak, but the one creator you're talking about is Hope Scope, where I went to her talk yeah. And I felt like I was just looking in a mirror, like she, everything she said, it just sounded just like me, but substitute the word leggings with monster trucks. Hope was stuck in the niche of leggings. Yeah, like that, that was it. Every, every, every yeah. legging video that you could ever do. She, yeah. I think she has the world record of the most leggings, I think she does. <laughs> but but yeah. anyways, and, she was uh, very depressed and was in the same situation that you were at. And so it spoke to you, right? Yeah, for sure. And what I realized, so, so I heard that and I was like, okay, so what did she do? So, you know, we're in the same boat. I'm looking in the mirror. How did she get out of this? So what I came to the conclusion was she joined like the class that you teach channel jumpstart. That was right. my conclusion. And I mean, there was a book too that you wrote. So I got the book, I read the book, but I, I kind of like was thinking I should just do this, you know? So, um, so that was the next step. I was like, I'm going to take this class. And this is for people who are watching, like this is not a plug for channel jumpstart or whatever this interview. I just have to tell you, if you want to hear my story, I can't divorce it from this class. Yeah. So I got so much help from this class. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take this class. So I went on the call with uh, Justin and we were interviewing and I was like, is this guy trying to like sell me, you know, because there's no kids channels. You know what I mean? Like I felt like I was the only kids channel jumping in this. And he's like, no, no, no. Like it doesn't matter. There's something here for you to learn regardless of what your channel is. There's like certain principles. And so I was like, okay, I got nothing to lose. I'm going to just try it even if I got a little bit of help, it's more, much more than anything I could have. And I think the most important thing I was looking for is like people like me, yep. creators like me, people who are all in on this and not just people who started a YouTube channel on whim and then dropped off after like three, three months or something. So I took channel jumpstart and then, yeah, then I met you and then we had an ignition call. And there was two things on ignition call that I thought were pretty sweet. But the first thing on the ignition call was I told you the reason why I'm joining channel jumpstart is I want to break out of linear growth because I felt like for the last two years, I was really happy with my growth and people would probably die to be in my situation as a creator. I had some really good, solid growth. Yep. So let's, let's, let, uh, you can keep on talking about it. So this okay. is, this is uh, the moment of COPPA and then you had good growth after that. This is like the, the moment that you, uh, you know, came on yeah. for channel jumpstart. So. Yeah. So like I think COPPA went up because all the kids were home, right? Exactly. But then, exactly. When the, but then when everything went back, it was kind of just like that normal, like slowly going up. So that was the that was the reason why I called you. I was like, I or took the class. I was like, I want to break out of this. And then the second thing you said to me, I don't know if you remember this. But I was telling you, like, I'm full. I'm going full time on this. I'm taking a sabbatical. And you were like, and you're never going back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. In my heart, I was like, yes. But I didn't know, you know, if it was going to happen, you know, but I was like something in me was like, all right, man, let's do it. So that was my ignition call that ignited something in me. Well, let's yeah, let's talk about it, because I think that, that there's a lot to unpack here, because uh, first off, uh, you made a de decision with your wife that you're going to take a sabbatical and um, you're going to save up enough money. So you had to save up enough money right. uh, for a year. 
took a sabbatical and um, ultimately you're like, I, I got to go all in. It's either make it or break it. Mm -hmm. um, what, one, one of the things I love is like burning your ships. Like you get over there, you burn your ships, you're not going back. You know, right. okay, you, you know, you, you had that moment of say, okay, we're going to make this work. Um, what was your day to day like? Because I think this is the difference between someone that's really serious about going full time versus someone that's not. Um, and I want to I want to share my story after you share yours. But sure. like, I think for for uh, you, like, what did you do uh, during the hours of the day um, to to be able to make sure that you could go full time? Is this before or after? I, I would say during the sabbatical. Oh, during like the sabbatical. You, yeah, yeah. So it was very quick. Like I basically I started a sabbatical in September, and then Vid Summit was like three weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it wasn't that much time where I was doing all this stuff. Like I basically went to Vid Summit, and then from Vid Summit to Channel Jumpstart, that was like around I want to say March ish. So then that was like around because Vid Summit was late September, so That's October right. to March. So for that kind of time period, I was just, well, first of all, I was finally able to get sleep because when you have a full-time job and you do two videos a week, uh, I was able to sleep. I was kind of just um, looking at data to make these decisions of like what was wor working, what was not working. I was um, trying to reach out a little bit to people. So I began to start that network, but I was basically just working on videos, coming up with ideas, um, better than what I could do before. Cause I felt like before I was like doing two videos on like a Saturday. Now I was like able to think a lot more, be more free in what I was doing, uh, go back and change things if I didn't like it versus um, just being stuck with what I had because it was the, the deadline was that day. So, 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 so the, the big point was you had a little bit more bandwidth and time to process ideas of what you wanted to do. And then yeah. two, you could increase the quality of your content For because sure. you had some time and it wasn't as back to back. So that, that was your full time job yeah. at that time. Um, and one of the one of the things that I found and I want to use my example, because I think there's there's um, a couple approaches. Um, when I first started my my agency, um, I, I basically wanted to make Super Bowl commercials and um, had two job offers, one in LA with an ad agency and one in Chicago from an ad agency. Both of them did Super Bowl commercials. So I go, okay, that's great. Found out that I was having a, a, a baby and uh, decided, you know what? Family's more important to me than, you know, moving away from family. Uh, Cause like it was some of my best memories is spending time with my, my uh, grandfather and uh, cousins, you know, cause we're all close together. And so uh, we chose to, to take that path and um, got a local job and realized that I needed to just go do my own thing. And once I was able to do it, I remember I had uh, my office at the kitchen table. That's, that's what it was. And this is back in 99. And, and um, ultimately I was working really, really hard on my business. Mm -hmm. And my wife's like, there's no money coming in. Like, what, what are you doing here? Like, you like, go out and sell, you know, whatever. And no, she didn't do it that harshly, but she encouraged me nicely to, to like, hey, if you're gonna make this work, yeah. you, know, you just can't sit at your computer the whole time. You actually have to go out and do. <laughs> but I, I mean, I had the best website. I had all the, I had all the marketing materials all done because that's what I did, right? right? And I had it for myself and that's what I was spending the time on instead of really looking at this. How am I gonna make money? Mm -hmm. Like literally, how am I gonna make money? And at the moment that I, that I did that, then I created a plan of how I needed to support the family and what that needed to look like. And so I think anyone in the situation, if you're going to take a little bit more time or even go part time uh, where you have that, take the time, to try to figure out how to make the money. Like mm -hmm. that's the way I look at it. I, and, and don't always think that doing ads is the best way, like like ads monetization on YouTube is the best way. There's there's several ways you can do it. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is supplement your income to get to a point where you can you can create momentum. And mm -hmm. um, but what I love about yours is you focused in on uh, what I always teach, especially with my students, because you know this more than more than anybody else. But it's just like it's all about recon and research. That's the first thing you do. You want to research what's going on, what's happening on YouTube, what's mm -hmm. happening, what people like, and and then really coming up with the ideas. It's like mm -hmm. coming up with the ideas, and then and then creating a plan. And that's what you were doing. And you, you were able to go through the process of making better decisions because you had a little bit more time. You weren't under the gun, right? And so on. There's one um, more thing too. I remember I did. I I basically I always wanted to learn how to 
uh, edit in Final Cut better. I always wanted to learn in Photoshop how to edit better. I always wanted to learn some of these things that were tools that would help me. So I like, I don't know if you heard of like uh, Lydia courses. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I took a Lydia course on like Final Cut and then I did another course on uh, Photoshop. So I also kind of filled my time with like um, becoming better. So I had all this time. So I was like, yep. hey, I wanna look, and I like study children literature, like my, my niche. I also like study literature, like the kids at that age, like what did they like, what were they into? So it's kind of like also an educational aspect to this besides just working on it. That, and that's great. And I think that's what you need to do. And I think the, the only word of caution that I'd, I would say is don't get sucked into the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. uh, you could spend all your time on education and not really applying what you're learning mm -hmm. um, and and making money. Like, like ultimately that's what you need to do, right? If you want right. to be full time. And so, um, okay. So uh, we, we painted the picture, you, you went to Vid Summit, you heard Hope Scope and says, hey, leggings, I just wanted to die because <laughs> of every leggings in the history of all mankind. And and then you that sport that story stuck with you, and you're like, oh, this is what she was able to do to break out. Yeah. And 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 I think the first thing um, with her story and your story is to define what you are on YouTube. I, I think you got to understand, you know, your boundaries, you know, uh, of what you can do and what you can't do. Because before you just kind of whatever you wanted to do in your heart, mm -hmm. you would do and you'd post. But there's certain boundaries, there's certain expectations, and I want to call these the viewer expectations. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think that's where you got a little bit of clarity, uh, especially coming through my system, you know, because right. that's what we focus in on. Um, like, what was the parameters? I knew that you 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 knew that uh, you would always do a monster truck, and you did every variation of that. But what was the parameters of what you could try, and what would you stay away from? Well. I think to con like to continue the story and answer your question, what happened when I took the class was at the very beginning, it was like basically defining who you are and who your audience is. Right. And I feel like those two things I took, I, I just assumed I knew. Yep. But um, what happened was at the, one of the beginning calls is like the Q&A sessions that we had. Uh, we were supposed to set up like a ghost YouTube account and yep. you're supposed to like go into like um, follow other creators like you and just see what's popping, you know, in the area and see what YouTube suggests to you. So then I did it on monster truck. So I was just like looking for monster truck channels. And then during the Q and a thing, you were like, um, no, don't do that. <laughs> I was like, um, do another one. I was like, okay, uh, what do you, what should I do? And then you were like, here, just look at this channel. And the channel you recommended was AS for Adley. Yep. And then when I went, you, you're like, this channel is doing really well. Like this channel is like really hot. So just look at this and see what you can learn. And in, in, my, in one sense, it's like, but that's not a monster trucks. But another sense, when I looked into it, I was, everything is like a revelation almost. To right. Me. It was such a small thing for you to say, look at this channel. But then what I kind of like connected the dots between who I was, that channel, what they were doing. And then there's another show that my kids love. It's called Bluey. I don't know if you heard of it. Yep. yep. Yeah. So these three things like started like in my mind coming together and I'm like, I know who I am. It was like an identity yeah. finally realization. Like I know who I am. Like I thought I was like a monster truck channel. Yeah. I'm actually a channel where I'm playing with my kids and one of the components we play with, which is the most component out there is monster trucks. But it's like flip flopped, you know. Yeah. I thought I was monster trucks playing with my kids, but it's actually a kids channel. And one of the things we now play with is monster trucks. Yeah, let me uh, let me reemphasize what you just said because, um, like I like I said, I've been on YouTube since two thousand five, and I've I, I can't even give you the count of how many people I've consulted over the years and mm -hmm. and worked with. I just it's just the number's way too high. Um, but that is the number one thing. It's like you got to know what you're doing on YouTube. You got to mm -hmm. know, you got to know who you are. And I think there's certain things that we want to do. Um, and this is the thing that kind of bothers me the most. Um, like I, I'm going to do some confessions here. <laughs> but <laughs> it's like, in. they're being unauthentic. Thing, I take notes. Yeah. They're, they're like, Oh, these guys get a lot of views. I'm going to do this type of content. And then wait, no, no, they're getting more views. They do this type of content. It's like, nobody wants that. Like follow, follow your passion. Mm -hmm. Right. Figure out what that is. And, and you, you were able to define what that passion was. I love playing with my boys 
and we're playing with trucks, we're playing with this or this or this. And, and it was like, uh, it was a relationship between father and son and, and the activity. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's what you love to do. Well, you're going to be energetic to come up with really cool ideas. And then, and number two, you're going to look at it. Okay. What, what would they actually like? You know, you start, uh, re doing more research and recon and say, Oh, this would be a great idea or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it elevated everything. Cause now, now the, the value proposition, cause once you know who you are on YouTube and what you're passionate about, once you know that it's easy to create value, mm -hmm. it is cre create value for the viewer. Cause like you're really putting parameters of what you will and won't do. Mm -hmm. Cause you're not going to put stuff that is non-related for the viewer now, because it's, it's more about a son and father's journey with toys and having fun and, and the activities itself. Yeah. And, and that is the, the, the magic. Mm -hmm. And so, um, my, my whole thing is, um, I can tell you at the end of the day that those two things is just like understanding who you are and understanding the value proposition of what you bring. And then, uh, ultimately, I guess there's a third thing, but, uh, knowing the viewers relationship with your value proposition, is it working or not? You know, I, I think that's the secret of every channel, like, mm -hmm. it, like at the end of the day. So like with hope, she was, she had in her head that she was like literally a leggings channel. I says, hope you're not like you're a fashion channel. Mm -hmm. You're literally a fashion channel. You, you just only do leggings right now, but you do fashion mm -hmm. and fun and you're, you're a person and you're funny and yeah. you're quirky. Like, let's show that, like, yeah. let's not always do this other stuff. Exactly. And I think that's what you got to do is just like realize, Oh, this is what I am. This is what I'm passionate about. Right. Because ultimately I can guarantee you like, like, and, and I think you've felt the same way is when you're, when you're creating content without a purpose and you're just saying, I'm just doing this for the views. Um, it just, it's just, it's just hollow. Mm -hmm. It's shallow. Yeah. It's unauthentic. Right. But if you're doing it because you're passionate about it and then you get the views, you get, get what ramped, right? You're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this is like so great, man. It's like oh, the best video of all time. Right. Like yeah. that, that's the secret. It's like, like, I can't tell you how many people just copy. Oh, and, and uh, I'm going to throw this back on you a little bit. Um, but you're like, I can do better than that. Like if they, if they get a hundred million views. I can do better than that. I make better videos than that. Well, you might make better videos than that, but you might not see the value proposition if that's, if you're just looking at the video itself. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I think you were able to come to that realization of, oh my gosh, I'm so much more uh than just a, a monster truck video creation yeah. channel yeah and and, I... and and then that started to open up possibilities and i i want to i want to be able to uh, unpack this a little bit let's kind of pull this back in but um but you can see that you had some pretty massive growth after the fact and um and it, it was like you know i think this is your last 90 days and, and you know st you know so on and so forth which is great but the the question the question is how fast do you make changes? I think this is a, a question that a lot of people want to know because you're like, once you identify, hey, this is what I am and what I'm not, um, here's our content, what it is and what it's not. Here's the, the, the guardrails. How fast do we actually try to um, uh, make changes on it? So um, <clears throat> I have so much, like, I'm just writing these down when you're saying, because there's so much in my head, but to answer your question, <laughs> The first thing to do to answer your question is like, I felt like I never, even now, I've never threw a monster trucks. So it's not like I'm going to be like, oh, now I can do anything. Right. And like, no, I'm not going to do monster trucks anymore. But instead, it's like I have monster truck like series and I still, um, you know, do that definitely like regularly. But now I can try something else like that's following what I believe like the the passion is of the channel and the and the the purpose of the channel, which is inspiring play, inspiring kids to play. So it's kind of like I begin to like get out of that monster truck thing a little bit and just try something. So I was like, okay, if this is who I'm comfortable with and I know that this is my audience is, then my audience should like this too. And so then we just tried, we tried one thing where we worked with Mario Karts. Yep. So then I was like, okay, let's just try that. And it's the same idea, similar flavor, but it had nothing to do with monster trucks. And then it didn't it didn't do so hot at the beginning like it didn't pop off but then after a couple months it was like Ooh, and then it went up yeah i was like oh i didn't even know i kind of didn't even notice it like it actually took someone from the class 
I, I definitely, definitely want to, I, I don't know, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll use this as an example. I don't think this is the right example, but I think it's uh, close enough. Uh, but sim similar type of concept, right? Yeah. Um, you know, went, went for a period of time and it just popped off. Right. And yeah. this one's an older one, uh, you know, on this, but, um, a lot of people think, Oh, YouTube, uh, YouTube does hates me and it doesn't like this type of content. So I need to do the other. And what I say is like, let's look at the data analysis of what's going on in the first 24 hours and mm -hmm. seven days. And, and, and you might think, Oh, it was like a way under performer. Like it's not doing anything that I need to do. And my whole thing is, is, well, did we give YouTube enough time to identify the right viewer and, and then ha have, have that, you know, be suggested out there. And so many yeah. people just give up on it. And I yeah. I've had student after student after student and you included, I'm like, no, nope, you're going to wait. It's a good video has good metrics on the mm -hmm. data on the first 24 hours and, and seven days. Yes. It's way underperforming your, your monster truck bucket but let's just wait so i want to i want to uh deep dive into this because i think um a lot of people don't know this is when you try an idea um i always say go all in on it and 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 just don't do it once but do it multiple times and yeah. there's a reason why we do that and i'll kind of explain that in a second the first thing going in all at once is okay let it let it breathe you know and so when you release it did it uh, overperform, underperform? The only metric that I look at, the only metric that I look at is how many people started the video and how many people ended the video, okay? Mm -hmm. And and everything else, I'm like, okay, was it a good video? And it could say lower impressions, they're lower, you know, it, it, it went here on browse feature, but it didn't perform as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. Then the next one that I look at is the click-through rate, because I'm like, okay, Good, good uh, view duration, good click through rate. Maybe we just need to wait a little bit of time. Yeah, and sure. I'm very, very, very cautious on looking at traffic. You, uh, you can see in my book uh, and read in my book of how mm -hmm. sensitive I am to traffic. And the reason why is because there's an AI that controls all of YouTube mm -hmm. and every traffic source has its own algorithm. Um, and it has its own bots and it has its mm -hmm. own operation things and ways to see success. And so for me, I get very uh, particular of where the traffic's coming from mm -hmm. because it tells me how people are actually watching the videos um, and and gives me a little bit more data. And then two, it knows what I, I, I know what I'm competing with, right? And I, I can figure out my baseline. And and ultimately, when you release your video, you, you get questioning, did I make the right call? Mm -hmm. Did I just like, did I just host my channel? All the, especially the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Did I just host my channel? I'm never going to do this again. <laughs> um, right. I, I, like I, I've heard it all. Right. And I, and all I say is wait. Now, what I do tell you to do is like, um, we talk about bucket structure and we won't get into the depths of that, but it's like, um, the, I think the big thing for me is like having a couple videos ready to release and you're going to do it again. Right. Um, right. You know, because if those if those metrics look good, let's do it again. Um, mm -hmm. And most people don't do it. Um, mm -hmm. And so you you were able to see it, and then over a period of time, I can't remember if it was twenty one days or, or forty days or something right around there. That's when it just just like catapulted up, right? Yeah. I mean, and it wasn't yeah. it wasn't just like this. It was like this. Yeah, um, and it's nothing you know, to do and, with monster trucks. Nothing yeah. to do with monster. Trucks. Nothing to do and with that, monster trucks. Yeah. When that happened, I was like, I was fell out of my seat. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So it's definitely exciting. Yeah, and, and, I, I and I think, and I think that's the the key, right? It's like at the end of the day, it's like okay, now, um, now it it is performing. We can do it again, and it's like, can mm -hmm. we replicate that, right? Yeah. Now here's here's the difference. Um, I had uh, I had a student. I won't name them at all, but they they came through yeah. the process, and we they did exactly this, and and uh, their video didn't perform. As see, I told you, didn't work, didn't work. I'm like, make your other two videos. Like we say, you want to make sure that you have enough videos because when this pops off, mm -hmm. it's going to lift up every single video, every single video, um, you know, in, in that bucket. And they're like, no, oh, whatever. And they didn't do it. Uh, it was literally four months to the day that they released it and it popped off. It was the most viewed video they've ever had on their channel. Mm -hmm. And you take all the video uh, views of their whole channel, that video, the, the video that they, they released got more video views than the whole channel did. 
Man. And guess what they didn't do, Joe? <laughs> a second. <laughs> they didn't do a second or a third <laughs> video because what would have happened was, what would have happened was when that video was taken off, that video had to suggest a video. Right. And the first place it's going to look, guys, everyone that's listening to this, is in your own library. Right. So when someone's watching it, you have a high probability um, of, of YouTube recommending that as the next up mm -hmm. because it's related in your library. Okay. Now there might be some different data points or they might have different viewing patterns, but there's a high, one of the highest probability that comes up. Mm -hmm. And if that metric hits, guess what happens? It kind of marries that together. And in, when anyone watches this video, they're going to watch that one. Mm -hmm. And, and ultimately it's just like, why, why wouldn't you do that? So they kind of released a video. They currently made a video when it popped off and made it. And it was their second most viewed video of all time. And I'm like, you just missed out three other videos you could have had mm -hmm. that could have literally elevated your channel. Mm -hmm. And they did, and it took a little bit longer, uh, but if they would have done the first initial thing that I talked to, to, talk to them about, mm -hmm. uh, they would have been in a totally different situation because they'd be doing their fourth video instead of their second. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just like elevating everything on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that being said, uh, you had this video pop off um it, it 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 caused you to now um I, I would assume it would cause you to say okay this is actually true it works we can do these other things yeah. so what did you do next well i did another video like it <laughs> i was like because i i didn't really have it all set up where it's like two or three videos because i i was just trying stuff at the beginning i kind of was opening up new buckets or a new series of video contents so I was kind of opening up maybe two or three different ones. And then after, uh, I think it was a couple months and that one of those from those uh, buckets that I had, one of them popped off. Then I was like, oh, like this is working. So then I went after that series and then I kind of went all in on it. So I think I made about four or five more like that. Um, and I didn't do it all at once, but it was like a couple more monster trucks. And then I did one like that. Could, could you explain why you didn't do it all at once? Cause I think a lot of people think, Oh, this is my new area, my new thing to do. Like why, yeah. why wouldn't you do it all at once? Well, I, I didn't want to like crush the monster truck momentum. Cause that, that's like my loyal fans. And then also, um, I didn't want to crush the video that I was doing well. Yeah. So like, I felt like if I drowned it out, like I have an analytics, it'll, it'll show me like my top 30 videos that are performing. So I, I don't like, I could see like, oh, this is doing really well. So I don't want to compete with it against myself yep. by having too many. So I kind of waited a little bit before I released the next one. And then like a month. So if I do the same uh, idea in a series, I'll probably wait about three weeks before I release one. I won't do it like every, every other video is like one. Yeah. Like so let me, let me kind of clarify this so that everybody, um, I got to kind of decipher what you just said, cause like you, you're, you're knowing it from basically what I'm teaching it, but you, you kind of explain it in a way that maybe most people wouldn't understand. You're looking specifically at the traffic source and you're seeing this traffic source, these videos are performing, uh, in real time. Um, and, and they're working really well and YouTube's making a choice right now. Uh, what would be best for the viewer? Because like, remember, YouTube has two goals, uh, you know, predict what the viewer wants to watch and keep them on the platform longer, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they found what's best for the viewer. You weren't releasing a new video because of the impact that it would have had on that that placement and views that was happening um, on that other video. Because like, that, that, if, you, if you did it, um, you know, like a very similar type of video, similar keywords on it, then YouTube would have to make a choice based off of that. And so mm -hmm. you didn't wanna cut your videos off at the knees. What you wanted to do is when this other video was kind of creeping down and right. you release the other, right. and then that way it's super relevant. And I want everyone to listen to this next thing because it's like really, really important. It's super relevant because all these people that just watched this video now have another video to watch. And YouTube's going to serve that out to them uh, in the, their, their, their way, wh whether it is on homepage or suggestion. And so it's just like really, really, really good in the sense of where YouTube is making that recommendation for that viewer. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's what you're saying. I just wanted to make sure I, uh, yeah. they, they weren't getting the wrong impression. Uh, but I always found it's like, Oh, um, I'm gonna, this had success. I'm going to just release like 10 videos and I don't do anything else. And, mm -hmm. and, and yet that's not a good idea either. 
And so um, really, really love that. I want to I want to show this this net me metric. So uh, for those I teach my students, number one, you know, it's about uh, the traffic source because uh, that gives you some understanding of how they're watching YouTube. Um, and then it's the the viewer itself, because then we kind of pair that together, like, OK, how they responding to it? You know, what device are they on and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but but the metric that I really care about and, and this might shock some, uh, but I really don't care about subscribers. I haven't cared about subscribers in about six years. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it like when you say a subscriber, uh, you're probably meaning something that I I mean, which is I want an active viewer. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't need a subscriber. I want a subscriber to, uh, you know, just be subscribed to the channel. But I want someone that they they see a video, uh, they, they, they're they anticipating waiting for the next one to release. Like they're right. a fan enough that they want to watch that next video. And I want to show this next one because this is something yeah. that most people don't really look at in analytics. Uh, and I'm here to, uh, to give my uh, congrats to YouTube in every aspect. They have the best dashboard of all time for creators. You know, they, they really help us, but it's this. Um, and I want to use this video as an example. Um, and there's an opportunity you have to have uh, data of returning viewers. Returning viewers is in purple, and the blue is new viewers or, or unique viewers. And um, what's, what's interesting is we're always trying to uh, keep the purple above the blue because that, that is a loyalty factor that you have. And, and then ultimately, uh, you know, we want to, when we release new videos, we want to be able to bring in that blue new viewers, mm -hmm. and then they're going to know and love and trust us and want to watch a, a, a video, a returning viewer. And so we have that type of relationship that's going on. And um, you've done a pretty good job at that. Um, and I think that goes to the decision that you made uh, when you decided, oh, I'm gonna try this Mario Kart one, still do monster trucks. This uh, Mario Kart one took off, but I just don't wanna do Mario Kart because the people, when they came, they were expecting a certain type of content. Mm -hmm. And if I do something completely different, um, that that will destroy a returning viewer's connection with you. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, what was what was your plan there um, of once you started to, to develop uh, the Mario Kart you know, portion, and then you tried some other things. Like, how did you keep that balance? Because I think this is really, really, really important for creators. Because I think some people jump in way too quick and do way too much fast, um, and they they don't look at the data and make smart data driven decisions on how fast to to apply these new strategies. I definitely, I definitely slow played it. <clears throat> like I didn't. Like I remember one time having a question and answer period during um, during our class, and then I tried to like list out. I don't know if you remember this question, but I tried to list out like uh, for my first video I'm going to do monster trucks, and for my second one I'm going to do Mario Kart, for my third one I'm going to do this, and then for my fourth one I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to just like keep like funneling through. I try. It's like my math, my math major. You know, my math brain is just like I want to have a system, but instead of trying to like organize it like that. I just slow played it. Like I always do like monster trucks and then I'll try a new thing. I did monster trucks and I did Mario Karts and then Mario Kart monster truck. And then I was like, okay, let me introduce another thought. So another thing we started messing around with was like, let's pretend. Um, Cause I was confident who I was. I was confident in who my audience was. And I felt like this was something that they would be interested in. So we started uh, another series where we were just like kind of, it's not like it's scripted. So because I know who I was, I know I wasn't trying to like script something, but right. yet it had structure. Mm -hmm. So then I started this new series where we're gonna try this, where we're gonna pre pretend and play, and then I'm gonna like bring that in. Uh, so we'll try one of those, and then we'll go Mario Kart, and then we'll do like Monster Truck, and then maybe we'll try another one of those. And I did a couple of them just to test it out. And then, okay, then after I had one of those, I was like, okay, this is working. I couldn't believe it. I was like, people actually, it's like, it's like I finally realized who I was. I finally realized what I was doing. I had confidence. It took a little bit of time on some mm. of these things to pop off, but I knew I was confident in what I was doing. So I was like, I don't care if this is not popping off now. I know this is a good video. I know from whoever watches it, I'm getting good retention yeah. rate. So I'm, I'm just gonna not worry about the, uh, you know, the views compared to the other stuff. Try another one of something else. So I, I, I now have like, 
I'm definitely not a monster truck only. It was never about monster trucks only. Um, but now I definitely feel like I've, I've gotten to this point where we have these different things besides monster trucks that I feel like I can breathe. Like, I feel like I have so many now options of like what I can do because I know who's watching and I know what's working and I'm confident in what I'm doing. So I and mean, you're having fun doing it too. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's like, true. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, no, okay. So, true. um, let's, uh, let's kind of dive into, uh, the next stage. So, um, you're on a sabbatical. You start getting more confidence. You're starting to see a little bit more success, and and I, 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 we can see when when it hit because I think you know uh, you said September is when you took the sabbatical, right? So I would look at around April. That's when I started the class. Yeah. If you go to April of 2021, what happened was around April, May, June, it started to go up, and then. Uh, that third and fourth quarter of that year um, is is a leap. Which, which would have, which would have been literally a year, right? It took you a year to get to that point. Is that what it was, or from from the class? Like I just went right out the gate, man. Like when I started learning stuff in class, I didn't wait till like the last. Week no, 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 no. Yeah, because we we have you apply and do tasks every single yeah, week. Yeah, right. so I'm not worried about that. But I mean, when when did you know that you could just ne not have to go back? Did the sabbatical end, and you're now all in oh. on that. Uh, so I think it started, okay. What happened was, um, I got some advice from a channel jumpstart person about my ad placement. And with my ad placement, I realized I was kind of originally, my original thought with ad placement was like, I'm a kid's channel. I don't want to like throw all these ads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> parents trust me with their kids. And so I was like, I don't want to put too many ads. I mean, literally for 15 minute videos, I had one ad, yep. maybe even zero sometimes. Cause I didn't even have anything at the because I wanted people to watch. Yep. So I, I was talking to one of the channel jumpstart people and I was mentioning in my ad placement and they're like, why are you crazy? They're like, do you like you, you should this, you are not taking advantage of people, Joe, you should be placing just more ads in. And then I was making my videos. Uh, 30 minutes long because I right. after the recommendation of the channel you told me to look at. So I was like, right, right, right. These longer. So now I got 30 minute videos with literally like one or two ads in them. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, no, so you me, need I wanna, I wanna okay, that's insane, number one. And I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad my my fellow jump starter like put you in your place because that's that's insane. Yeah. Um, and I want everyone to know just because you place an ad doesn't mean people are gonna see it. Yeah, that was, okay, there's an algorithm for that. Like, yeah. like YouTube literally uh, is very monitoring how tolerant they are with ads. And some people get more serve more ads and others don't. And mm -hmm. and even if you place it, the only time that you uh, can't skip it when it's a, a non skippable ad. Mm -hmm. And that's the highest tier, you know, of ads that are out there. And you know, 99.9% .9 of you guys don't have to worry about that. But ultimately, uh, people are uh, are watching watching your ads, but in, in moderation. So like, like you started to add more and did that immediately, did you go back to your back catalog and, and do that? Or what, what happened there? I had over 400 videos that I went through and I placed ads. I like basically doubled my ads. So for a 30 minute video, I have now four ads. Yeah. I went through all of my 400 videos and I started replacing ads. So if there was one, I put two, I basically doubled all my ads in each of my videos. And what happened was my channel increased in revenue 50%. Yep. So uh, I was trying to do the math before. I thought it was 30, but it's actually 50%. Because if you double, if you double your revenue, that's 100%. So it yep. half doubled. So it's 50%. So once my revenue started getting to that level and like the video channel started like increasing exponentially, then I was thinking like, I think it's more risky for me to go back to work. <laughs> and, and the reason why is because you're like, wait a minute, I won't have time to do recon and research because I've been yeah. doing that now. I won't have time to do some education yeah. to make me a better creator. Like this. The channel's going like this. I'm just going to drop that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go back to subpar. Like, I'm going to ride yeah. this wave. I'm gonna, I don't, who knows how long this is going to last, but there's no, yeah. So, so that was, I think, once that started happening and I started getting these paychecks uh, each month. Um, then I started realizing, okay, like before I was like, not sure, yeah. um, but now I'm like, 
this is this is kind of like a no brainer. Yeah, I I uh, I love it, and um, I know a lot of people listening right now or watching on this live stream. You know, they might be full time, or they might be you know this is a hobby, or they're getting into it, but. Um, a lot of people don't think you can make money on YouTube and, um, and they come to that realization cause they're like saying, you know, it take a whole bunch of views to get it. And, you know, and, and it's just, YouTube doesn't love me. And so I'm not going to get paid. And so it's not, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Um, I never like to look at that. I think that's a very negative way of looking at things. I think, okay, what's the best way, oh. like I said, what's the fastest way for you to make money. And sometimes it's not. Um, you know, getting the views and de being dependent on ad revenue. But once you understand the viewer and who you're talking to, mm -hmm. um, everything works really well. And I want to explain why. And I want to I want to use this as more as an ad buyer because uh, I own an agency and we do a lot of ad buying for, you know, our clients and stuff like that in the past and whatever. Um, and an ad buyer is looking for certain demographics and they're looking for certain things that people would like. So, you know, they, they want to place ads that would be relevant to the viewer. Mm -hmm. If your content on your channel, cause your channel is a collection of all the different videos that are there. If your channel is a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that, that ad buyer is not going to put a lot of their very expensive ad Mm -hmm. on your content because what it does is it's hitting different demographics okay and they want very very specific things so once they once they hone that in that's great now here's the thing that you don't know um well you might know it you guys might know it because you guys are smart but uh youtube has this auction that's going on okay and and the ad buyer has to put a bid in of how much they're willing to spend hitting that target uh, mm -hmm. the audience okay this is what you might not know the way to bring your uh, CPMs, RPMs up is getting people wanting to place ads on your channel. Like right now, I have a channel that we own that gets $33 per thousand. We make, Ooh. we make some very, like we make, we make more money in a month than we did all year. You know, it's just like so great. And, and the cool thing about that is because people place ads on our channel. They say, I want my ads to hit this channel. It's hitting my audience already. OK, mm -hmm. and and so they're competing, which brings up the ad price. Well, guess what happens when when the ad price goes up? <laughs> Auction I make more money. <laughs> Auction like, is good. like like and, and you think that 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 like and th this is another this is a, another big thing. Wow. Um, you know, you think that doing press outreach doesn't yield you views. I do press outreach to increase my visibility with the brands mm -hmm. that are looking for my audience because then they'll bid on each other and they'll outbid each other. And guess what happens? It magically <laughs> goes up. Yeah, it's outbid <laughs> me. And I think for me, because I'm on a kid's channel, it's I think I'm going to see more like sponsorships come into because yep. I think with the kid's channel, they can't target viewers. So how how are these ad agencies who are like trying to reach my audience? Uh, how are they going to find it? They have to now come to me personally for sponsorships because they're like, this is now a targeted ad basically for their toy. So I think like it's going to, I feel like that's going to start coming in too. So I'm not just reply, uh, depending. Yeah, no, there's, there's a lot that they can do and, and YouTube's been really good. I mean, if, if there's ever an organization that deserves the, the gold play button is YouTube. Um, and let me tell you why is because they had to deal with the federal government on on uh, an issue that uh, a lot of the uh, political parties that were there just didn't understand how how views work. You know, mm -hmm. they don't understand the, the the economy and stuff like that. And you know, I was right right in the middle of it. But um, they they did a really good job protecting the creator. And yes, there was like a huge purge and issues because of regulations, whatever. But they, they needed the gold star, you know, play button, you know. You know, because they, they really protected it. And then two, uh, they really uh, found a way so that that channels like yours could still exist. Because mm -hmm. um, the only way that you can exist is if you make money and 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 YouTube knows that. And so they're, they're really taking care of that demographic uh, specifically of content creators. And so uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of opportunity. But two, um, you've you've seen fluctuations of your ad pricing, too, but it's it's coming up. Yeah, you know, which is great. So, um, okay, so Joe, it, it's yeah. been it's been an hour. 
Um, <laughs> it like it just feels like five minutes to me, but it's been an hour. I know there's a lot of people on here that would like to ask questions. And if you're cool, we'll, we can answer some questions yep. here in a few minutes. But I want to I want to do this. Um, when when did you feel the confidence that there was no turning back? I, I, I know that you you kind of you kind of felt, OK, why would I want to do that? Because I have momentum happening now. Like, but w when was it? it was like you didn't it, it doesn't even phase you anymore. It was like, oh, great. I'm, that was a really great decision. Yeah, because I think everyone has a different time um you know and intolerance and and it's okay we want you to come in and go full time when it's right for you and i want to give a perfect example after you share yours because this one still baffles me to this day it literally does but go ahead well i definitely feel like if i was single like i would live on rice and beans i would have went full time like four years ago when yeah. i was before i even took the sabbatical like yeah. i would have just ate cereal all day i wouldn't even cared like if that was passionate what i was doing because I'm like the breadwinner of my family uh, and I have a wife and yep. kids, she was telling me like, I had to make sure she was okay. So I had to just make sure there was enough money in the bank. We had to make sure for a period of time it was coming in regularly because the, the money that comes in is like up and down, up and down, depending on like the, the quarter, or depending on the time of the year, like during Christmas, Thanksgiving, money's up during other times of the year, like money's not as high. So I kind of had to like evaluate, okay, steadily overall on average, like how much is coming in. Okay, I got that number down. I had to relate it to my wife. This is what's going on. But eventually what happened was I just felt like, uh, I just felt like I couldn't go back to that old lifestyle. Like I felt like I was having, like there's nothing wrong with teaching. I'm, you know, I did it for 17 years, but I just like what I'm doing more. I'm yep. getting paid for what I'm doing more than what I was teaching. There's more room for me to grow uh, than there was in teaching. I'm like utilizing a lot of more than just what I was doing. Like with teaching, it's kind of like the same things every year. I could, you know, maybe switch things up here and there, but like you're working under people who are like always throwing curveballs at you. And I'm like, why do I want to go back to that again? Like I know there's like a steady paycheck there, but it just seemed like I just, my heart wasn't in that. Yep. My heart was in this. Yep. And because the money, was there uh, my wife gave me the green light all those reasons i'm like i, I it's, it's even hard for me to imagine i don't even know how i taught and did two videos a week like i can't even remember they like uh, it's called grinding Joe. come on man i repressed that i repressed that memory in my head it's not <laughs> you get some ptsd going on <laughs> I, um, like, yeah. I don't even know how it would go back to that and i don't even know why it would go back I, I, I love I love the story. I got to give one. I actually put it in my book because it was one of those stories that that I love. So one of my one of my good friends, he has a channel called What's Inside on YouTube. His, his name is Dan Markham. And both him and his wife had these amazing jobs like they really, really paid well. They had some great benefits, all this other stuff. And he was crushing it on YouTube. Like I, I knew what he was making. I'm like, damn, why aren't you like quitting, man? He's like, well, you know, yeah, I, I just I just need security, man. I'm like, dude, like this is secure. He just didn't know if it was a fad or not, you know. Mm -hmm. And and he goes, Well, I made up my mind as soon as I hit two million subscribers, I'll I'll quit. And I'm like, You, you kidding me? You kidding me? <laughs> like, like you you're making I won't go into the details, but he was making a lot of money. I was like, Okay, yeah. you're 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 insane. Um, but but ultimately, uh, I think everyone has their tolerance level of you know when to do it. Like for me, I would just jump right in. I that's just the way that I am. Um, I, I'll figure out a way to bring in money. That's just, that's the way that I am. Um, mm -hmm. but I think everyone, uh, you know, views it different. I, I think would just, you, you need, it's going to always be awkward regardless of when you take your first step, but you, you took the step. You say, I can do a sabbatical because that's what you can do in education. I got a year to do it. And so that's my burning of the ships. I got a year to make this happen. And, and then you went all in. You weren't getting distracted. Like, I got more time off. I'm going to go golfing or whatever. No, you, you you put yourself in education. You did a lot of research. You're putting more uh, time in your content. You're really looking at your viewer. You went to a Vid Summit, which is highly recommended from my point of view, not just because I own it, because there's some amazing people that you're surrounded by sharing mm -hmm. what they do. You know, And, and then two, ultimately, uh, you went all in. Um, and, and, uh, we were able to work together, which I, which I love. So, um, I think everyone is in different boats and, and I, I would strongly encourage you all, 
Um, if you're not full time now, um, you know, to have a plan, like, like I, 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 and, and Joe knows this really well, my students do, but I like it, make it a goal, like mm -hmm. give it, give it a goal and put a time on it. Uh, make it happen. Don't just have it be a dream dreams. Like, Oh, one day, you know, well, no, what, what, tell me the day you're going to do it. Like, right. give me that, you know, and then, and then we can reverse engineer a plan. Uh, but I, I do believe that if you're there now for those that are already full time, I want to, I want to, uh, inject something. Don't be uh, satisfied with where you're at. Always want to improve. And I'm here to tell you, um, I've been around the block a few times on YouTube. And uh, when, when, <laughs> when you take one of the top YouTubers on the planet, and, and this is not a Mr. Beast thing, but you take one of the top YouTubers on the planet, and I say, do you know what? Uh, this company that has a lot less views that, than you get a year, uh, in even a month, made four X more money than you did all year. What's going on? <laughs> and, and they're going, Oh man, teach me, you know, but it's like, treat this like a business, treat it like an opportunity. Like, Hey, you have this source of revenue, look at other ways to bring in revenue, other ways to leverage, uh, this, this opportunity you have mm -hmm. so that you're actually building it out. Cause like, once you change that mindset in the sense of, do you know what? We're, we're bigger than just uploading video. We're, we're bigger than a YouTuber. I don't like to say, um, I'm a YouTuber or, you know, my friends are YouTubers. I think we do that for our, our people, but we're an entertainment company. Mm -hmm. Like we're an entertainment company. We can do licensing. We can do merchandise. We can do, uh, different products. We can do courses. We can do, yeah, there's a myriad of different things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then two, um, I believe in my heart of hearts that, that we're gonna have more opportunity than ever before because of what YouTube's, uh, allowing us to do. And I think we're going to see the next stage of the next billionaires and trillionaires. And I put trillionaires on it coming from social influence. You know, we're already seeing this with Mr. Beast, what he's doing across all his products outside of his head stuff in Walmart and all that other stuff. Yeah. But you don't need to be a Mr. Beast to do it. I, I see people crushing it and making tens of millions of dollars um, by leveraging their, their YouTube audience to go do things. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm one byproduct of that. I, I can tell you that right now. I'm doing my passion project, which is a TV show. And it was all funded by the crowd. The crowd is activated through buying merchandise, which we call gifts and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. And so it, at the end of the day, you know, there's so much that you can do yeah. uh, when you have that. So uh, I just wanted to kind of put that, those two cents yeah. in there. So what we're going to do right now is open it up for Q&A. So if you have a question, put it in the chat. And um, if you want Joe to answer, put Joe's name on it. If not, uh, both of us will kind of just kind of go from there. But if you wouldn't mind doing that, uh, I want to do the first uh, couple um, super chats because super chats are great. How do I reach 100 million subs? Go ahead. Me? <laughs> I don't have 100 million subs. You, you put you put an icon of Mr. Beast right here, um, and then you make it for you. That's how you get 100 million subs. Yeah. Um, I I can tell you this one. I I, I can tell you this one. Um, don't focus in on 100 million subs. Uh, you know, like don't don't focus in on that. Focus in on the 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 viewer um and and increasing your baseline so like if you're if you're getting a hundred uh you know a hundred thousand views per day or a hundred thousand views per month let's increase that to 200. you know what are you going to do there and uh youtube's all about momentum and once you start doing good videos that engage you might see the data and say look these types of videos bring in more subscribers these types of videos bring in more loyalty Let's do both of these because they'll come in and they'll they'll be more loyal to me off of that. And if you're always increasing your baseline and never being satisfied with your content, always want to make it better, and and you're always putting your energy and effort into it, you're going to increase it. Now, I'm going to ask you, Joe. Um, you you were able to grow. Um, I know I know this is. Do we really focus in on subscriber count? Do you really care about subscriber count? Like, what do you care about? So for me, like, I wish I said I didn't care so about subscribing, like whatever. There's a little bit inside of me that like wishes I had more subs, but in the end, I like, I, I don't know why I would want a hundred million subs. I'm just happy doing what I do. And I don't know, like to me, it's like subs, it's kind of like cool to have, but I think what I'm more going after is just like loyal viewers. So, and I just like what I'm doing. So 
instead of reaching and trying to reach 100 million subs, I'm trying to like make a channel that I enjoy doing that's fun and that other people like watching. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all I care about is, is active viewers. Like, like, you know, active viewers equals more money. That's the way that I look at 100 subs, 100 million subs doesn't. If you look at my, like, if you look at my sub count, it's like not that big at all. It's not that impressive. But if you look at my views, like there's a ton of people, like YouTube is suggesting my content. So that's what I'm really happy with. Now that my latest video is doing better than others in the last month, should I wait three weeks before releasing another similar, uh, similar to it? So Joe, what do you think on that one? Yeah, I think that is what we talked about before, right? Yep. I think that's a good idea. Just try it too. And then see what happens. Yeah. I I'm one that I like to, uh, figure out, Hey, I might have, uh, several themes of videos that I make. Um, let's just say I'm releasing weekly. Um, and every week I have a theme. Um, I, and one starts to take off. Well, when you release it, you know, it, it'll take seven days and you, it might be higher than normal, whatever. Well, right when I do that, I would, I'm, I'm already producing the next video that's similar to that, but I'll probably yeah. be releasing it in, you know, uh, three to four or five weeks, depending yeah. on where we're at, you know, oh, sure. and, and it depends on, you know, how, where it is and in, in my content strategy. But when I do, uh, guaranteed, if this video and I, I'm, I'm be looking at real time analytics If this video that I did the first time is starting to increase. There's no way you could pay me ever to release the video of similar content until it starts to come down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, I, I've been there, done that too much. Yeah. I, I you, don't don't wanna... gonna, you don't know how high it's going to go. Exactly. I, it there's go no higher way. and higher and higher. So yeah. then why? Yeah. Why yeah. No, no way. No way I'd ever, ever do that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. So here is the next one. Uh, how do I uh, be a better host for videos? What type of videos uh, I make? I want to be able to reach an audience and not just the camera. I want to have viewers notice the creative ideas and subscribe for it. Okay, so I'll answer this one because uh, it's kind of, uh, where's that? It's like, I, I would go back and what are you passionate about? Like, like, are you passionate about Pokemon? Are you passionate about, you know, Harry Potter? What are you passionate about? Like, Like, figure out that. And that's what I'd make content on. Like literally there are audiences. So first identify your passion. And then I would go look out there with what I call recon and research. Uh, you can get my book. Um, there's a link below in the description. Uh, but there's a whole section on that of what, how you do recon and research. Go do that and see similar people making that your type of content, the content that you're passionate about and start looking at Hey, what videos are performing better and why are they performing better? Why did they use that, that title? And why did they use that thumbnail? And what, what are the patterns of similarity? That's what I would do for sure. So any, any thoughts on that one, Joe? Uh, I think it's kind of hard because being a host is kind of like your personality too. So you don't want to like change your personality to like be something you're not. And I think what you were saying is like, when you, when you are like doing something you enjoy, it's just infectious. It's obvious. It's obvious when you're doing something you're not enjoying. So to me, it's kind of like if what you what I hear you saying is like if you love what you're doing, the content you're doing, then you just will be a better host. Versus like you're just chasing after content that you don't love. Yeah, I want to I want to say something. I, I don't normally say this, but this will be this will be a good one because like I uh, been on YouTube for a while. So when when I started my um, how to YouTube channel, like, hey, you know, I, I wanted to help people with YouTube and understand YouTube. And they're like, why don't you spend more time on that? Why don't you put more energy and effort into those videos? Like, why aren't you blowing that channel up? Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. And I'm like, well, first off, and I just want to be clear, um, what I'm passionate about is the entrepreneur side, business side, strategy side, I- ideation side. And, and ultimately, if you have a, a channel that in one day you can make more money than you do all year on this other channel, where mm-hmm. would you put your time and energy and focus? <laughs> yeah. okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm being real here. Cause like this channel right now has nothing to do. Like I, I literally, when did I post my last video? Like three years ago or what? Something like that. When we do these mm-hmm. live streams, but, but it's like, I really don't spend time on it. I'm not really passionate about it. I'm sorry. I, I'm passionate about this. Mm-hmm. I love, I love these di- type of discussions. Um, but ultimately, you know, I will go where I'm the most passionate about. And for me, uh, man, I, I, we own a lot of channels and we do a lot of work and yeah. it's fun. 
And I love, you know, mentoring people, but I love mentoring them once they understand my system. I, I you know, anyway, but that's, that's just me. I just like, for me, I, I, I want everyone to say, okay, you might be passionate about this. Um, but if there's another passion that makes you more money, that's probably where I would go if it was. Yeah, me, so. for sure. Okay. Let's do another one. Um, what metric tells me how many viewers are at the end and how uh, do I read the retention chart to understand the dips and decline dips and increase in spikes? How do you read your analytics of the, of how well they're staying on the videos itself? It's kind of an interesting question because I feel like <clears throat> It, it depends to how many people are it's suggested. Like if it's suggested to a lot of new people who are watching, then my like average view duration and the percentage, the average percentage of people watch the video, it's kind of lower than what it normally is because YouTube's sending it out to another audience. Um, but then if it's like my loyal fans, it's not reaching like, uh, you know, being highly suggested, um, then I could kind of see that there's a different, more uh, like a higher, a percentage I would be looking at that I would be looking towards to make sure that this video is doing well. So I think like if no one, uh, if it's not being suggested too hard, I would be like at 50% of like the person, the average view uh, that they watch all the way through. But then when YouTube's like pushing it like crazy and there's a lot of views on it, um, then it's like around in the thirties. So it kind of just depends. Um, well, I, I think the thing for me is um, I have a very programmatic way of looking at the health of the channel and the health of every specific video. The thing that I look at is, is simple. How many people started the video um, and stayed on in the first 30 seconds? And, and I'm, I'm gonna say this very, very distinctly, but that's where I put all my energy and focus on the click and that first 30 seconds to a minute and, and don't worry about the rest. Like literally just get, get that number up. If you can get that number up on the, uh, you know, the first 30 seconds, first minute, if you can increase it, let's say that you, uh, have, you know, 75% of the people watch the first 10 seconds, but like 55% of the people, uh, watch the first minute, get that 55% up to 70. Okay, like work on that, work on the beginning of the video and and see, try things out. Did it work? Did it not work? Why didn't it work? Try other things. Oh, this worked here. Let's try to do that. Maybe do more of this. Look for the comparisons. Go out and do recon and research. Why are people doing it in a certain way? Maybe if I try it that certain way, this would work. Mm -hmm. Look at that data. And once you have that data, um, then then it, if it, it, it elevates it, guess what it does? When people uh, find value in that first minute, they're going to stay on longer. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to look at the next drop off. Generally, it's around three minutes. Like if, if you're there, it's around three minutes. That's where I would start focusing on next. Do that next, uh, you know, from one minute to three minutes. Focus in on that. What if you can bring that up another, um, you know, another percentage? Now, this is what uh, what you don't know. Um, and, I'll, and I'll say this. I've done that method. Uh, like I begged YouTube to get us that data. Like I, I was literally begging them. I'm like, please, I will give you money in my bank. Just like, give me the data. Cause like, this is the data that we need as creators. And mm -hmm. when they did, like it just, it all changed because now I can see in real time. Well, it wasn't real time then, but it, I could see, um, you know, what was actually happening in a video and I can make adjustments on it. And mm -hmm. that's the whole thing for me. If I can't, if I don't know what's going on, I, all it is is a hypothesis and I need mm -hmm. to validate it. But if you give me some data, I can validate it to see if it worked. And so that right there has led to it. And I, I had a channel, uh, like we, we um, own a lot of channels, like I said, uh, we went up from 55% uh, in the first 24 hours, um, which which is really good. Like people, 55% start the video, end it. We went to 92, 92% 92 <laughs> on it, on a 26 minute video. That's crazy. And how do we do that? It's like really knowing the viewer, bringing the value, and then honing the process of the value of taking people on and knowing where they'd be more likely to jump off. Mm -hmm. That's what we focus in on. And you you know that because like we we go in depth on that in, yeah. in my training for sure. So well, related related to that, there's gonna be a couple of things I was gonna add. Like the um when I talked to you once, I don't know if you remember this at Vid Summit, but I mentioned a brief conversation about intros, and then you were telling me like you got to like stop the long intros because I think uh, in my field, there's like a lot of long intros, oh, yeah. even, even like, hello everyone. Or today, yeah. we're, you know, even like these little extra words that I think can get clipped off that are like not necessary because every day is today. Anytime they watch a video, it is today. So you don't need to say today. You can even like cut that word off. So I think in one sense, uh, I learned a little bit about like, sh like making my intros a little bit shorter. And then the second thing I was going to say is, 
um, related to what I hear you saying is that YouTube actually has an analytic that measures the retention rate in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. So if YouTube has an analytic that measures the first 30 seconds of your video. We should be very like uh, uh, concerned about the first 30 seconds of our video. So, so that to me makes me, I think I definitely like looked into that uh, a little bit more with my intros in those first 30 seconds because I realized YouTube valued it so that I need to value it. Yeah, and 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 too, like how many people would say, "Oh, this is not what I clicked on," and they're like, "Well, I, the value's there, but it's at minute marker eight. Like, who's going to go to minute marker eight? Like, mm -hmm. you got to bring in, and you know, yeah, <laughs> there's just so much on this. It's so great. Okay, let's uh, let's do another question here. Here is a super chat. Okay, um, I have an active hyper niche audience, but I need to grow. How do I broaden my audience? I teach bridal sewing. Thank you. We'll see you at Vidsum. I'm <laughs> glad that you're able to see me at Vidsum. That's awesome. So um, I, I'll, I'll answer this one because um, I want I want to I want to clarify. Um, I think that when you're focusing on your niche, you want to be hyper focused, but not so focused that you lose some opportunity. So when I look at bridal sewing niche, um, you're, you're missing prom. You're, you're, you're missing these formal dances. You're missing these galas that they're able to go to mm -hmm. and all you're focusing on weddings. And I know that weddings might be your end goal and that might be like, you know, 60% of your content, but you can do cute ideas when you're really going from there. So I'd take a step back and it's just more gown sewing. Um, you don't need to change the name of your, uh, of your channel. Uh, I think it's just the content itself and look for opportunities. Like, how do you actually make things look good, you know, and, and uh, you know, go through that vein. And so I do know this, I just had a son just got married uh, last week. And so my wife was like on, <laughs> on uh, how do I find a modest dress, you know, and go through that. Cause you know, like we're, we're modest people, right? And so she needed to sew some, some things on a dress so that it, it you know, it, it was more modest, right? And so they, she was looking for this too, you know, and, and she's like sure. going on there, but she wasn't doing it for a wedding dress. She was doing it for, for a formal dress, you know? And so like, even though that she thought it was wedding, she's not doing a wedding, but it's, you know, for the wedding. And so just think about your audience of how they'd be using the content. And that's, that's mm -hmm. what I would do. So very good. Um, let's go to the next uh, one. Um, Man, there's some good questions here, and I'm trying to get the super chats. I wish um, StreamYard would take my suggestion. I've been trying to get them to just give me a tab with all the super chats so I don't have to like hunt hunt them. Um, but anyway, uh, okay. Is it better to change the channel age uh, that that's going well, or start a second or a new channel? Um, so I think this one right here, um, like there's the video content itself and then there's the branding that's associated with the um you know the uh, channel so right now my clutter garage outdoor and diy outdoors and diy um like i think you could take off and diy like i why would i need to know that on your channel you know what i'm saying and it could be my clutter garage and outdoors or my cluttered garage you know it would be fine um, I rarely, rarely, rarely recommend uh, changing and starting another channel if you're trying to reach the same audience. If it's the same audience, same channel, that's what I would be hitting. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's what I do, Ed. Uh, good luck on that one for sure. So, all right. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so here's here's one from Sam, like Sam. Okay, if the average view duration is up, but impressions and CTR is lower on the video, is something to be is this something to be concerned about? What would you tell them? I mean, I think that's normal. If you like, if you have lower CTR and impressions, and then your average view duration is going to go up because that's who your like core audience is. They're watching. I would be afraid if your impressions and CTR was low, and then you had a low average view duration. Yeah. That should speak more to you about. Uh, about the content of that video. 
Yeah. So Sam, the way that impressions work, and I want everyone to understand this, um, I, I've been really, really sensitive to impressions because that's a, a data point um, just for online. It's like, how many times did your video be seen? You know, the the, the thumbnail and the title has been seen. That's an impression. When someone sees it longer than a second, that, that would be an impression. So if it's on the feed or whatever, they see it, that's, that's an impression. Um, and what I love uh, is YouTube's been a lot more transparent, trying to help creators be smarter. Uh, we had the person that's over uh, discovery. This is the algorithm of the discovery uh, team of recommendations uh, come to Vid Summit, and he got on stage and he said, "Look, if you have, and I, I don't remember the numbers, but it's he he said if you have a thousand uh, views on this video that you released, when you release your next video." you're going to get 7x the impressions of your views. So a thousand times seven, and you're gonna have, you know, 7,000 impressions on your video. Now, this is what, this is what I want everyone to understand. Um, what he's saying there is when you first release it, you'll get 7x more impressions. But if YouTube looks at that impression data and also the click-through rate data and the retention data and says, this is not a very good video, it's not, hitting with that, it's not going to go out to more impressions. Uh, you just had that one quick opportunity to go out to a little bit more people. And that's where momentum can happen. If it's like, like hitting the audience, and they're not skipping the video, they're seeing it, they're clicking on it, have a good click through rate. That's where you can see momentum, and then it'll go out to more people. So YouTube does this very systematically until you have some authority, um, where it will just kind of test a little bit bigger audience and test a little bit bigger audience or re retract a little bit of audience and then test another audience until it finds the right viewer. Once it finds the right viewer, then it's going to do it. And sometimes you might exhaust that viewership uh, because of the data and, and it might wait 21 days or 40 days or 90 days before it serves it out again. Um, and I want to show this because this, this is a really good example, uh, Sam, um, let me hide this and then have it come into this. Um, this is a really good example. I'm going to show you this slide um, right here. Let's see, right, right here. Okay. So this would be a perfect example of, um, you know, a video that was kind of performing. YouTube was looking at where, where can I actually show this that would actually get people to click? Well, what happened about, I would say, out of the gate, it's just like your average uh, video being released. You can see this right here. And the average being being released, um, you know, it's following the grades, like just like maybe above average a little bit. But it was about day, day 13 that it started to increase. And then about day 15, 16, it started just to pop off. And what happens there is YouTube literally found the audience says, oh, this audience is on suggestion, and here's some videos that's working really well on, and we're gonna put it by that. And as these other videos are being seen, this video is gonna be recommended uh, through the suggestion engine. And so that's that's the beauty thing about this, and I I, I love it. I, I mean, I could talk data until <laughs> I'm blue in the face, but yeah. Okay, I'm making videos asking 1,000 millionaires advice. What's the best piece of advice, Daryl? And how would you uh, make a million dollars again? Okay. So, um, so here's here's the thing. Um, I was able to make a million dollars really early in my life because um, it was a goal that I set and I set a time on it. Um, and I, I just want to put it down this way. Okay. Um, I think getting a million dollars is the easiest thing to do uh, when you approach it in a very systematic data way. And I would say it's just math. How do I get a thousand people to pay me a thousand dollars? That's a million dollars. How do I get 10,000 people to pay me a hundred dollars? That's a million dollars. I, I can do this all day. Um, and, and once you figure that out, that's where you're able to make a million dollars. So like, like that, I would just look, look at how can I bring so much value that a thousand people are willing to pay me a thousand dollars or, uh, you know, uh, 10,000 people are willing to do a hundred dollars. Um, and that's, that's what I do. Wash, rinse and repeat. And I would focus in on that and I'd figure out what that value proposition, it could be a service. It could be a digital product. It could be physical product, whatever it may be. Um, uh, but yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, great, great question on that one. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is um, there are a couple other questions that come in super chats. 
Uh, Toys Fun Fam. We started a channel in 2017. Kids are eight and 10, still creating, and uh, 14 and 16. Still want to create a kids safe content, but <laughs> there's there's some restrictions, of course. Uh, any advice that you give them? So I, I look at the, the the problems too, and you're gonna run into this problem too, Joe. Is your kids are gonna get older, right? And and they're not gonna be engaged. So what what would you do in this scenario? And then how do you age up? Uh, do you start a new channel? What would you do? I think right now I'm, I'm not, I'm, I definitely am like looking ahead. There's a channel. I don't know if you've heard of like Jordan matter. I'm obviously you probably have, but I like Jordan right well. Yeah. I, <laughs> I kind of think like, I'm trying to look ahead. Like he's got a kid who's like in high school, I think early teenage. Yep. So I'm trying to think, I just like look ahead, like, where's this thing going? You know, am I going to have to do another channel? So right now I don't, I'm not planning on another channel yet. I almost don't want to like spread myself too thin because I think what's happening right now is working. But uh, I do have to like consider like how is this thing evolving because I don't think my son 60 years from now is going to want to play with monster trucks. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, there's a couple yeah. ways to do it. I think uh, the way I look at it is you're going to need to make sure that it's a thing that you look at, Joe, and and also Toys Fun Fam. Um, like I would just say, okay. Here's, here's the issue. What can we do? Um, one of the most creative issues that I seen resolved was um, when, when I was working with uh, a, a partner of mine, Sean Duras, whose daughter's Adley and they have A for Adley. And I'm like, dude, she's going to grow up. What are you going to do? And he's like, I don't know. I'm going to make videos, whatever. But they've been focusing on the, the issue and they, they've come up with the most ingenious way to do it. Is it and, and I love it. I love it. I think it's so great. And what they're doing now is doing animation and the animation they're using, uh, you know, audio and video clips and they're making it animated and they're doing these shorts and th these other videos. And it's just a genius way to do it because what you're going to do is you're going to grow a channel up to a specific point and, and they're going to age up and does the audience age up with them? Well, that's hard. And you're going to see a lot of decline. Cause like you've been going around this, this certain audience and you're going into another one. That's the, the correct time to do another channel. Say we're going to focus in on older viewers here, younger viewers here. And I would build up the library as big as I can. Cause that can always bring you views. It'll just mm -hmm. kind of go down if you're not releasing new content. But if you do something like Sean Durst did with, you know, space station animations and are making animated shorts on it and videos, it's going to be always pumping in to it. And you can always have that, uh, that IP, which is really, really, really awesome. So, okay. We're going to take two more questions and then we're going to cut it. Cause I got a lot of stuff to do. So, uh, here's the next one. I did some research on the biggest YouTubers in my niche, uh, photography and noticed their growth was kind of stagnant now with most of their views coming in from two years ago is the niche dead. So, um, here's the thing you're probably in looking at the biggest YouTubers and you're looking at their views, I would be looking at which videos in the niche are getting the most views. <laughs> like, don't look at the, the biggest YouTubers. They, they might be distracted. You know, they might be doing some other stuff. I always like to do uh, the biggest videos in the niche. And sometimes when you have your viewing patterns around something, uh, these bigger YouTubers have a lot more authority than these videos that don't have the authority. So you might not be seeing them, but other people are watching them. So I would just go through my book on the recon and research. I give some very specific tips, how to do that, how to, how to not corrupt it and really look at it in a way that, um, that you're able to start identifying that as well. So, uh, ultimately that's what I would do now. Um, okay. So Joe, I, I just want to thank you, uh, really from jumping on and I want to just give you a one last moment, um, to really, uh, give your best advice. Like if you were, if you were going to talk to Joe before he took the sabbatical, um, and went on this journey, what, what advice would you give yourself? Um, and then to, um, you know, uh, give the advice for people that are full-time now, I think there's some people that are struggling and they want some good advice. Hmm. What would I give my advice to the old Joe? I think probably the greatest like help I got was when I started reaching out to other people. I felt like when I was kind of doing this on my own, when I, when I noticed growth occurring was when I started reaching out to other people in the space 
So I probably would have told my old previous self, like, uh, maybe go to Vid Summit earlier or take a <laughs> class sooner or just like reach out to people in your space and like have those conversations. And I just feel like, and I just feel like I got so much help when I found people who are a little bit ahead of me um, and I could ask them questions and bounce off my ideas and not just, uh, and then I would have like saved my old Joe who'd been so frustrated with like things happening on YouTube and I didn't know why it was happening. Um, so I just feel like, I think that was probably the best thing I could have did was just reached out to people um, who were like mentorish or like ahead of me and like sought sought some uh, advice and counsel. Yeah, I, I would say that's by far um, really great advice. It's like when you surround yourself by the right people, uh, people that will help you be objective um, and and that they know what you're going through. I think that that says a lot. And I, I want to just kind of end on this. There was like this YouTuber I was looking to help and he's like, I want to do this full time. That's great. And, you know, I kind of, um, you know, wanted to help him get to that point. I says, here, contact these these other families and um, and uh, they, they're doing what you're doing. And mm -hmm. you guys meet every week, just meet every week and talk about it. Well, one, one, he had like, uh, like 100 subscribers or 300 subscribers or whatever. The other family had 1000. And then another one had like, uh, you know, 10,000. And another one had 25,000. And the 25,000 says, you're too small for me. You know, <laughs> you're, you, you know, whatever, whatever. And I, I was like, okay, just don't, don't do anything with them. Just, just the, the three of you just kind of focus in on it. What was crazy was within a year, that, that guy that had a hundred or 300 uh, subscribers, I mean, he was at 3 million, 3 mm -hmm. million subscribers, and he was getting 60 to 80 million video views a month. And the other two were just crossing either a million to 2 million. And that guy was at 25,000 that didn't do anything with them. Guess where he was at? 50, <laughs> 50, 50,000. Yeah. And he was like, oh, come on, man, you know, c come help a guy out, whatever. And he's like, dude, I was trying to reach out to you. You didn't want to do anything with us. Yeah. You know, surround yourself by the right people. That's why I love Channel Jumpstart. It's like the right people that are, you know, very positive. They're not negative. Yeah. Um, they're looking at a way to say, hey, did you think about this? Did you consider yeah. this? You know, and you're like, well, no, I didn't. And and it's kind of opening up. Yeah. That's and why I love that community a lot. It didn't so. even have to be with people like in my same space too. Like that was the well, thing. that's even better when they're not yeah. in your same space. Yeah, from my point of view. Yeah. So, well, cool, Joe. Thank you so much um, you. Uh, for jumping on, and yeah. I'm going to take one last moment with everybody, uh, guys. I just really, really do appreciate you coming on on a Saturday for this live stream. My goal is to inspire you to create better content and to really make a business opportunity out of this YouTube thing. And um, you're gonna see a lot more of me in some other things that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I'm just gonna spend a little bit of my extra time on Saturdays, because my, my day off, whatever, uh, to really bring you value as much as I possibly can. And I got some really, really cool things that are coming down uh, this year that I'm excited about, because it's not gonna take me a lot of time and it's something I'm really passionate about and you know, something that you're gonna be able to do it. But if you haven't bought my book, go ahead and look in the link in the description. Uh, it's called The YouTube Formula. Um, and it is gold. I'm here. I literally don't hold anything back in this book. It's a Wall Street Journal bestseller. I also have a 30 day creator challenge. It's for free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just go through that, give you tips of how to improve your channel. And then ultimately I do a mentoring program called Channel Jumpstart. You can find a link in the description on that. In fact, we have a lot of jump starters here. Uh, those are people a part of Channel Jumpstart or have done Channel Jumpstart and I'm still mentoring. They're here on this live stream as well. So guys, thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video. Uh, I guess I don't do videos anymore. I do live streams. So we'll see you on the next live stream. Bye now.